Welcome to The Art of Focus. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the six books that really stood out to me and the one book that you just should never read at all because it was terrible. One of the big critiques about my reading plan, and I read, uh, I think I've got 58 books this year. My high year was maybe two years ago. I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago, but it was 80 books is that how do you read that much and how do you retain the information in it? And the fact is that I don't. What I do see in a lot of books is patterns and patterns that carry across through many of the books I've read. What I do see is that, you know, say some marketing book is really good for um, finding your niche. Some other marketing book is really good for uh, a pattern. And this actually, this is one, Traction, which I won't talk about today. But um, Traction is really good at helping you find um, which marketing channel will work for you. And so there's books that are recommendations for specific things. Today, what I'm going to talk about is the six books that really stood out for me. And we're going to start with The Bullet Journal Method. This book was great for me, even though I've been bullet journaling for a while, because it helped me refine my process. It's a great, it actually sits uh, right on my shelf. Hold on. Right there. It sits on my shelf. It's been sitting there as a reference book. I've actually flipped it open, oh, probably twice a week. Um, since I read it uh, about a month and a half ago, I flip it open, I look through, I just look for, you know, what What did the official system say? How should I do this? What were some ideas um, for how I'm doing my bullet journaling, you know, say my migration process or anything like that. I found this was really good. It helped me refine my process and it helped give me some more ideas around how I track projects as well so that I can get my projects into my bullet journal and get more things back into my bullet journal because I had kind of gone away from it and uh, in some respects, um, and actually it helped me pull a lot of my stuff back into it. So I just have one canonical system, which is my notebook to deal with. So bullet journal method, a great one. Even if you're not bullet journaling, it was a great book for how to think about your projects. It had a huge section, a great section on how to think about your tasks and just how to think about what you should be doing, what's important. So I would recommend it just on that basis alone, even if you're not planning to ever do anything with a notebook. Next up, clockwork. Now I read Profit First in 2017, by the same guy, Michael Michalowicz, and it was a great book. It helped me budget my business better, helped me get my business under control, and not even make more, but just felt feel like I had more income in the business because of how I was treating the finances day to day. It was a great book for that. Now, Clockwork does the same thing with your time. It puts constraints on your time so that you can use your time more effectively. It has a great, what he calls the ACDC matrix. ACDC matrix? Mm, might not be matrix. My name is ACDC. <laughs> And it takes you from like how you're acquiring clients, how are you um, how you're acquiring leads, how are you turning them into clients, how are you delivering to them, and then how are you collecting from them. Great thing. I'll be actually using this in 2019 as a bunch of metrics from my business so that I know where I'm going and I can track it so I can see what's happening with my business. Uh, that's a big, again, big focus, big thing that I'll be doing is identifying these metrics for 2019 so that I can be awesome. And those are out of Clockwork by Michael Mikhailowitz. Now, Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is great because it helped me develop some habits and it's helping me stop some other ones. I started tracking stuff uh, in my bullet journal again. Uh, I stole some stuff from Matt Ragland in his habit tracker and I'm using it to track, uh, like, am I getting seven hours of sleep a night? Am I hanging out with my kids during the day? And am I reading for an hour a day? Those seem to be the key habits that I really need. Um, specifically starting out reading. Now I actually often start recording like this because I have children that get up even at, I don't know what time it is, 5.30? I can hear a kid upstairs. Now, if I start reading right after this and I get into my day smoothly, it just helps me feel like my day is balanced. So tracking these habits and making sure that I'm doing them day in, day out, so that my day is focused. And Atomic Habits has helped me build, you know, the cues, the reward cycles, and everything else to do them more often so that I am just better at everything that I do. That's Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now, the five love languages. I've been married for 15 years. Aww. Celebrated it in June this year. And one of the things we read fairly early in our marriage was The Five Love Languages. And one, it's one of the books that I've given away a bunch, given to people who are, you know, just maybe not even struggling, but hey, I would like to get better at marriage, this whole marriage thing, Curtis. And so we've given them The Five Love Languages numerous times. Um, we've lent out our copy numerous times as well. And so I reread it this year, and it really helped me dig back in with my wife about what are our love languages? What is her love language? What is mine? How are we serving them for each other? And then we also identified what are the love languages of our children so that we can speak them. 
And no love language, you know, one of your love languages is talking. One of your love languages is touch. One love language is giving gifts. That's three. I don't remember the other two right now, but those are the ones that are consistent in my family. And so how are we serving those and how do we show our family members that we love them by speaking in that language to them? If you want to have a stronger marriage, stronger relationships all around, then understanding how people speak love and recognizing when they're speaking love to you, even if it's not your love language. So say your spouse always brings you coffee. <laughs> Okay, it's just coffee. But if their love language is giving gifts, I think it's one of the other ones, then um, that is them speaking love to you. And you need to recognize that at least a bit. Recognize that they're putting the effort in for you to show you that you're loved. Now, Real Artists Don't Starve by G Mr. Jeff Goins. This is a book about artists not starving, like that you should be charging for your work uh, in some way. That, you know, uh, Michelangelo was not a starving artist. If you look at the money he had back then, he was making millions. He had millions of dollars. Um, and this book really helps you break the mindset that you shouldn't be charging for things, that you do have stuff of value, that you are providing content of value, that you do have things that people should be charging for. And it's not bad to ask for these things. Whoever told you it was bad, they were wrong and they need to, I don't know, check something on out themselves. They were wrong. Um, now, one thing he doesn't do is he does, he does a good job of saying that we should seed patrons with our work and that helps us just get known better, but he doesn't do a good job of showing the difference between seating a patron and doing everything for free. So when do you make that switch though? When do you make the switch from, you know, and who do you decide who your patrons are from, you know, who you seed and then who do you actually charge for stuff? He doesn't do great at that. It's not, you know, that's probably the biggest fault of the book, but if you're struggling with, you know, thinking you provide anything of value, definitely read the book because real artists don't starve. They charge for their work and they charge well for their work because it's of value to people. Now, finally, I'm going to mention Clarity Wins. I am not done this book now, but I have made five or six notes. I've been reading this over the last three days and I've been made five or six notes and just around what I'm going to use uh, out of this book in 2019, how I'm going to, you know, I was reading this morning even before I started recording because I was reading while I was making coffee and looking at that and saying, how am I going to identify my superpower? I've also looked up how Steve, I think it's Steve Woodruff. Hmm, keep wanting to call him Steve or Scott. Woodruff though, for sure. Clarity wins. Maybe Steve, maybe Scott, we'll find out. Um, but how, what, like, what is his coaching program? What are the other things that he provides that might be of service to my business long-term so that I can identify my superpower and just do better at defining my niche and talking to people that are um, my best customers that I can help the best. So Clarity wins. Not done it. I'm like 60% of the way through and I say I have like five or six tasks that I want to do for 2019 in my 2019 planning session coming up in a few weeks out of this book. So highly recommended. Now the one book not to read. Now it sucks because you know, this book got so many awards. I got it recommended by like five friends and I started reading it and it's philosophical drivel. And that's all I can say. It's philosophical drivel laced in with two good pages of things per chapter. That's about it. Uh, now that book is Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. It sucks. It's just bad. It's not, I don't even know what else to say. It's like 350 pages and it could be 15, like literally 15 pages. And maybe we'll give him 25 because he gets a forward. That's it. Um, I actually like all the rules. I think the rules are really good. I like some of the ways he's calling out people for just assuming they get life because they exist. Not in life. Um, they're assuming that they're, you know, they should be millionaires or get all this money just because they exist. I don't believe that. I believe that you do need to provide value and that if you're not providing value, then like expecting you can go to Starbucks and have this living wage or have, you know, a whole bunch of income just because you work at Starbucks. That seems faulty to me. The job, you know, it's a dime a dozen in some ways. Like most people can do coffee from Starbucks. So that's not that valuable. But he, like, it's just problematic. And sometimes he makes, you know, blanket statements about soldiers with PTSD that he doesn't back up at all. There's no citation in it. There's, you know, 25 citations on a page, but that one, not cited. Just some blanket throwaway statement. But then 300 pages later, there's actually a citation for a similar statement. He makes some blanket statements about women. He makes some blanket statements that kind of support this, you know, male in the basement saying like, why do women reject me? And like have, saying that women have all this power to reject men. And that's just so terrible. And supporting some of the thoughts that come out of that, just, I don't know, that seems pretty sketchy to me. So I am not going to recommend this book. Do not read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. It's terrible. It's, I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> it's a bad book. 
Um, and I guess I'm disappointed. I don't know because everyone said it was great, but I even bought it in hardback. It's like, oh, this will be so good. My three or four of my friends recommended this and previous recommendations have been stellar, right? That one friend recommended The Obstacle is the Way and I loved it. Introduced me to Ryan Holiday. I've read all of his books now. Great author, Ryan Holiday. Jordan B. Peterson, terrible. Don't even do it. Like, ugh, just avoid the book entirely. If you want to know what the rules are, read through the beginning uh, and that's about it. The last one that talks about petting cats, I couldn't even tell you what that one was about. It was a long diatribe, like a, just a long story about how his daughter suffers. And that sucks that his daughter suffers. She's got, you know, degenerative arthritis. She's young, you know, in her teens still, I believe, from the book. And it sucks that that happened. But he never connected it back to why petting cats or dogs, because he does say dogs too, is a good thing. Like the best I could come up with after reading it twice was that there's suffering in the world. So if you get a chance to like sit down and like get comfort, go for it. That's all I got. I don't even know what to say. So there'll be a review of that coming up, uh, a longer review of that coming out on Should I Read It, which is one of my podcasts in a few weeks. I don't know. I have to look at my, my schedule, but still, might be 2019, but still, I'll talk more about it. And I'm going to say a lot of the same things. <laughs> it's a bad book. Don't do it. So those are the books that stood out to me and the one that sucked. Now, if you had any books that stood out to you, I'd love to hear about them. If you read a lot, you can actually find me on Goodreads. I'm Curtis McHale everywhere. And just find me. You can follow what I read. You can follow my reviews there. You can follow my reviews through Should I Read It? There's lots of different spots you can follow what I do with books. Now, if you have any books that stood out to you, let me know down in the show notes or show notes. Let me know down in the comments and the description below. You'll see a links to all the books that I talked about. See your links to some of the reviews that are already out for these books. Um, some of them are just coming out like on Thursday of this week. I think Clockwork comes out on Thursday. Um, some of the other ones aren't coming out for a few weeks. Some of them I did earlier in the year. Um, yeah, that's it. I'd love you if you subscribe, give me any comments you have uh, about the content, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it. Actually, keep the didn't like it to yourself. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, have an awesome day.